Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Learn Spanish con Salsa Podcast, the show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Marie. Hola, mi gente. Bienvenidos al episodio 79. Welcome to episode 79 of the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast. In this episode, we're going to talk about one of my favorite telenovelas. So the series Celia actually premiered back in the year 2016. So back in 2016 on the network Telemundo. This was a really, really popular series. It sucked me in right from the first episode. And I'm afraid to admit that I did binge watch <laughs> the series Celia. And it actually had 80 episodes. So I watched all 80 episodios o capítulos de la serie Celia. So I watched all 80 episodes. It was crazy. But it really, really gripped you in. Now, granted, this is not a documentary. So it is not a 100% historical account of Celia Cruz's life, but it does tell a lot about the history of her career as well as it juxtaposes that against the history of Cuba. So you get to learn a lot about Cuba and of course in a very dramatic telenovela way. <laughs> Again, not a documentary, but very, very entertaining. And it does highlight a lot of very interesting things about what happened to in particular artists and singers and, and musicians who, you know, had some prosperity in Cuba before the revolution. So it really does touch on some of those issues. Again, in a a very soap opera telenovela way <laughs> but it does give you some exposure to that part of Cuban culture and if you're not familiar with Celia Cruz wow she is just phenomenal okay she is one of the most popular most beloved salseras or salsa singers and in fact she was a part of the crew that started the sort of movement of salsa in Nueva York. So back in New York in the 70s, there was a record label that was formed, a whole company called La Fania, and they actually coined this term and started promoting the term salsa. So there's a really interesting history there with Johnny Pacheco, who was actually a Dominican-born musician, composer, and he had this vision to really bring together like Latin music under this one umbrella. And he brought together all these wonderful artists and really started promoting salsa and Celia Cruz was la reina so she was the queen of that and her just being Afro-Cuban and having this really strong and powerful voice and also being very proud to be Cubana and just having just a really just warm friendly spirit she was just really really loved so if you don't know the music of Celia Cruz I will be bringing some more of that <laughs> in future episodes so that you can really get to know her as a person and as an artist so she's very very well respected and revered figure in in salsa music and in latin culture in general okay so but today we're going to delve into some of the cuban spanish that comes from the series celia so again as i mentioned it's very entertaining but if you listen you also can learn a little bit about cuban spanish so as you know we talk a lot about spanish dialects on this podcast especially those dialects that come from the caribbean because salsa music bachata music some of the best music that's made today and that has been made in the past comes from these areas so the spanish that you hear in the music actually is caribbean spanish so if you really want to be able to understand not only the music but the people and the culture it's really important to understand these different dialects of spanish and how they relate to the music that you're listening to as well so i like to go into a little bit of a deep dive on that so that you really get a sense of what makes you know for instance in this case cuban spanish cuban what makes dominican spanish dominican what makes puerto rican spanish is different so you can really get exposed to these different dialects and begin to understand when you're hearing these different accents and different types of Spanish. So to start I'm gonna actually break down the lyrics that are in the opening song to the series. So if you go to episode one and again I will include a link to the series in Telemundo at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com forward slash 79. That's LearnSpanishConSalsa.com slash 79 for episode 79 of the podcast. And you will be able to actually view the first episode or capítulo or chapter of the series. And 
And when you first start watching the, the opening credits, right? So as the series is starting, you see this like really dramatic story. It's actually a little sad. I don't want to give any spoilers, but there's a song that is being sung by a woman who actually plays uh, Celia Cruz's aunt or her tia. And it, she starts out kind of sitting by the water. She's got like a band with her and she's singing the song. And I think it really does kind of bring this this whole vibe to the show, to what you're about to see in the episode. and also helps you kind of understand sort of Cuban culture in a way. All right, so I'm going to give you the opening song. Then I'm going to go through some of the phrases and some of the words that are authentically Cuban that you actually hear in episode one. All right. So let's start with the song. Sorry, I don't know the name of the song, but if you play the first episode again, it shows up right in the beginning of the series. So she's again singing and she says, and this isn't Celia Cruz, this is another character, but she's singing there in the beginning of the uh, episode. And she says, Las bellezas de mi Cuba. Las bellezas de mi Cuba. So the beauties of my Cuba, or the beautiful things about Cuba. Son pasión y son amor. Son pasión y son amor. So they are passion and they are love. Lamento del campesino. Lamento del campesino. So this lamento, it's actually how it sounds in English, like to lament, right? To kind of like to be full of sorrow about something or like your cry, like you're crying out. Not like literally crying, but sort of like you're struggling with something, right? And you're sort of expressing that exasperation or that struggle, right? So lamento del, of the campesino. And campesino, you can think of as a person who lives in el campo. So el campo is like the farm or a rural type of area. So a campesino is someone who's from that area. So like a peasant, something like that. So Lamento del Campesino, there's actually also a popular song by the same name. And it's sort of this cry of the peasant sort of thing. Like the sort of trials and tribulations of a person who lives in a rural area probably is not very wealthy and has a certain lifestyle. So this is just a part of culture in Cuba and also throughout the Caribbean where you have these more rural communities that are called El Campo. So Lamento del Campesino, que trabaja de sol a sol, que trabaja de sol a sol. So that works from basically sun up to sundown, right? So literally from sun to sun. But in English, we'd probably say, oh, you know, from sun up to sundown. So this is like a farmer, someone who's working really hard, who's working outdoors, who's doing more manual labor. Con el ruido del machete. Con el ruido del machete. So with the loud sound of a machete. So if you think about if you're working out in the farm, especially in Cuba, where they grow a lot of tobacco and sugar cane, right? Sugar cane, if you've ever seen it, it's kind of like tall, it's kind of hard to chop down. So this is like someone who's cultivating the land, right? So you hear that noise of the machete. Y la cadencia del son. So del son refers to a type of music. So son actually is a genre that predates salsa and actually is really part of the root of salsa music. It's a very similar rhythm, but it's a little bit of a different tempo and different dance, but it's very, very much related if you hear it. I mean, again, I'll include a link in the show notes so that you can hear a little bit more about son. Very, very similar to salsa, again, part of where salsa comes from. Uh, it has a lot of African influence in it as well, but it is a basically a genre of music, right? That's very popular in Cuba and actually comes from the island. Es la magia de mi Cuba. Es la magia de mi Cuba. So it's the magic of my Cuba. So magia is magic. Then she says, Guarapo, caminando barrio abajo, balatiendo el corazón. Guarapo is a type of drink that's made from sugar cane. So it has lime juice, but it's a, a drink, again, very typical of Cuba. And then she says, caminando barrio abajo. So walking barrio abajo, which you can look at as, you know, literally barrio is like a neighborhood and abajo is like below or under. So sort of like a lower class neighborhood or what you might call slum. So caminando barrio abajo, va latiendo al corazón. So va latiendo al corazón. So latiendo comes from the verb latir, which means to beat. 
So not to beat a person, <laughs> but like your heartbeat. So latiendo al corazón is like the beating heart, all right? So va latiendo is sort of, you know, it gives the sense of progression. In other words, so as you're walking the neighborhood, you know, your heart is beating, right? Or there's like the heartbeat of the people, of, of the culture in the, in the streets, basically. So caminando barrio abajo, va latiendo al corazón. And then she says, caña, trapiche y molienda, y el negro con su sabor. Caña, trapiche y molienda, y el negro con su sabor. So caña is sugar cane, or just cane. And trapiche refers to a mill, right? Or a place that you use to process sugar cane. And molienda is like to grind something up or crushing it up. So Literally in this case, you know, again, like I mentioned earlier, Cuba, very well known for growing sugar cane at one point. So, you know, a lot of people worked uh, milling sugar cane, you know, harvesting it on these massive sort of farms and plantations. So, you know, the whole vibe of this opening song is to give you a flavor of like the sounds, the sights that are common to uh, Cuba and part of its soul. So, caña trapiche y molienda, is sort of like milling the sugar cane or the sugar cane mill and grinding it up. So these are some of the things that you see in the island or throughout the island. Y el negro con su sabor. So sabor is like flavor. So el negro is the black man. So the black man with his with his flavor, with his style, with his swag, right? So these are some of the things that kind of set the scene for the series and gives you an idea of what Cuba is like. So it's a really beautiful opening song. And as, like I said, right after that song, there's a really dramatic event. I will not spoil it for you. <laughs> and then after that, there's a flashback. So it actually starts with this sort of dramatic event that happened long ago. Then it um, there's this like little flashback moment that happens. But the opening scene is after this kind of like song happens in this dramatic event, um, Celia Cruz is actually on stage giving a concert. And this is back in 2002. You know, she gave this live concert. I believe it was Madison Square Garden. I'm not exactly sure where it is in the series, but it kind of starts with this opening where she's on stage singing and her partner, whose name is Pedro, who is very uh, hilarious throughout the series. <laughs> Pedro Knight is the character. And this was her, you know, real life partner. But in the series, he's presented in a very hilarious way. I don't think it's really based on on truth. I think there's a lot of fiction mixed into like the circumstances surrounding their meeting. So, you know, just kind of taking it with a grain of salt. Try not to spoil it for you. But anyway, Pedro Knight, hilarious character. But anyway, 2002, they're both, you know, much older. They're on stage together. She's giving a concert and Pedro is like wondering what's wrong with her. So he's like looking at her like, hey, you all right? So he says to her, negra, negra, estás bien? And initially, so being a black person from the United States, you know, we have a very bad connotation anytime we hear like neg, like even the beginning of the word. It's like, wait, what did you call me? <laughs> but I think, you know, in this case, because this is Pedro, he's talking to Celia, he's talking to his sweetheart. It's his way of saying, hey, sweetheart, are you OK? Like, is everything OK? So negra, again, the feminine version of this, because he's talking to a female negra. He's just saying, hey, you know, are you OK? So it starts out right at the beginning. Negra, negra, estás bien? And this is a really a common term of endearment that you'll hear in Cuba. It's not seen as a bad thing. It sounds like that coming from a U.S. background, but it really doesn't have the same connotation in this particular context. OK, so that's the first sort of like Cubanism or, or like Cuban Spanish you hear in this. And then right after that, like she's looking out into the crowd. And again, I'm not going to spoil for you. What she sees, I'll, I'll, if you haven't seen the series yet, then I'll let you watch that in the first episode. If you have seen it, you already know what I'm talking about. She saw someone out in the crowd. And then after that, it actually does a flashback way back to the 1950s in Matanzas, which is in a region of Cuba. They're at a train station. So it's Celia when she's much younger with her sister, who is another hilarious character that you have to see in the series and her mother and father. All right. So they're all there together and they're about to get on a train and this whole situation that kind of breaks out. So Celia's mother is talking to her sister and she's saying, El problema es que cada idea es peor que la otra. So they're talking about 
some of the ideas that Celia's father has. So he's, you know, she's saying that every, you know, idea that he has is worse than the other one. <laughs> so he's always coming up with all these different ideas. So I'm bringing this part up, not that this is any, there's any Cuban words in this line, but it is very customary of this, you know, Cuban accent that you'll hear where the S is just dropped. So when you hear it in the series, when you watch it, it sounds, el problema es que cada idea es peor que la otra. So, but she's saying, el problema es que cada idea es peor que la otra. So just again, to get used to sort of the accent, this is very, very common, and throughout the series, you will hear this quite a bit. Then she says, no es fan, no es fan. So it's again, Celia's mother, she's talking to the father, so they're at the train station, and she's saying, no es fan. So this is an expression that means there's no rush, right? So no need to, to rush, you know, we'll be here waiting. So she says, no es fan. So another phrase, and this is, uh, again, it's similar to negra, like we talked about at the beginning. So this is the father. So he comes and he's talking to Celia's mother and her sister. And he kind of starts singing, you know, to them because the sister is kind of saying, hey, I need to get back. Um, I need to get on the train because there's people waiting for me. And he says, oye me negrita, los hombres siempre esperan a la mujer bonita. So he's kind of singing, and I'm not going to try to sing, but he's singing it to her, and oye me. So look, you know, negrita, which is like little black girl, right? Or, or it's more of a, like my girl, right? So it's a term of endearment, again, just like negra. Negrita is just the diminutive form of negra. So it's kind of like, uh, instead of saying bud, you would say buddy. Or instead of saying a pup, you would say a puppy. So instead of saying negra, you say negrita. So it's just kind of like that. So it's a term of endearment, and he's saying this to his daughter, Oye me negrita, los hombres siempre esperan a la mujer bonita. So men will always wait for a beautiful girl or a beautiful woman. And then about 14 minutes into the episode, so we kind of are leaving Celia and her family at the train station. Celia sings a song called El Que De Mas with her sister, which is actually a really beautiful song, and I'll include that in the show notes so you can hear it too. It goes like, El Que De Mas Se Muere, El Que De Mas Se Muere. And that means like el que is like the one who or the one that and de mas, uh, so the one that gives more, right? So the kind of flavor of the song is like el que de mas se muere. So like whoever tries to outdo me or whoever does more than me is probably going to kill themselves trying. Like they'll die trying because <laughs> they won't be able to surpass me. So that's kind of the vibe of the song. But again, I'll include it in the show notes so you can hear it. It's a really great song. But they're singing this in the beginning of the episode and it's saying, el que de mas se muere. One kind of important note, the de in this de mas is actually from the verb dar. And it's a subjunctive form of dar, which is to give. So the de is not the de like from or of, right? The preposition de, it's actually the verb dar. So el que de mas, so whoever this person is, we don't know who this person is, so it's not, you know, definite. So we're going to use a subjunctive instead of saying el que da mas, we say el que de mas, okay? So el que de mas se muere. So anyway, that's just the song that she sings. Again, this is a, a very, it's a telenovela. It's about Celia Cruz. There's a lot of music throughout the series. And anyway, after that, so about 14 minutes in, Pedro Knight is uh, introduced, his character, and um, it's hilarious. You just have to watch it. But anyway, this is before he's met Celia. This is when they're both much younger. And he is trying to talk to a woman on the street, and his friend is talking to him. And he's like, Pedro, what are you doing, right? Like, because they're in a band, and they're both musicians. And he's like, hey, look, the director of the band is going to be really upset if we don't get to our rehearsal or our appointment or whatever it is, right? So they're on the street outside of this cafe, and Pedro says to his friend, he says, his friend is Mario. So his friend is actually Mexican. So when you're hearing it, you kind of hear Pedro with this more Cuban accent talking to Mario, who has a very Mexican accent in the, in the show. So you get to hear the difference between those accents. Uh, but anyway, so he says, Pedro says to him, Acere, calmate. <laughs> Acere, calmate. So, you know, Acere is like, man, you know, dude, buddy, like whatever, like, hey, man, look, calm down. Calmate, because he's like very anxious, like, hey, we gotta go get back. He's like, acere, calmate. So, acere is a very infamous sort of Cuban term. If you hear acere, it's one of those giveaways that the person you're talking to or that you're listening to is, is Cuban, because it's not really used anywhere else. I mean, it's also only used between men usually. And then he says, Cuando tú veas la jevita que yo tengo, te vas a dar cuenta que cualquier sacrificio vale la pena. <laughs> Cuando tú veas la jevita que yo tengo, 
te vas a dar cuenta que cualquier sacrificio vale la pena. So, cuando tú veas, so when you see la jevita, and this is the Cuban word, a uh, jevita, so just like we had negrita, negra, there's jeva and jevita. And those both are just used to refer to a woman. So jeva or jevita is like girl or woman. So he's saying, cuando tú veas la jevita que yo tengo, so when you see the girl that I have, te vas a dar cuenta, te vas a dar cuenta, so you are going to realize. So darse cuenta is a phrase that means to realize or to find out. So te vas a dar cuenta que cualquier sacrificio vale la pena. Cualquier sacrificio vale la pena. So when you see the girl that I have, you're going to realize that whatever sacrifice, basically any sacrifice that he has to make, vale la pena, is worth it. So if you listen to episode 76, where I actually broke down the song Valió la Pena by Mark Anthony, which is It Was Worth It, you'll notice this vale la pena. So vale la pena means it's worth it. And again, in this context, you can see he's saying, look, whatever happens with me and the director of the orchestra or the band or whatever, he's like, look, it's worth it. When you see her, you'll realize that any sacrifice <laughs> is worth the trouble. All right. So those are just some of the Cuban words that you'll hear in the series Celia. So I hope you will check it out for yourself and get familiar with this wonderful artist and a very entertaining way and a very addictive telenovela. All right. So just to review the words from Cuba or the Cuban Spanish words that we talked about from the series Celia is negra, which is like woman or black woman or sweetheart. Negrita, which is the diminutive of negra. No hay afán, which is there's no rush. Acere, which is like buddy, dude, man, only used for males. Jeva, which is a female. And Jevita, which is a, a girl. All right. So those are the Cuban Spanish words. And you also learn the word guarapo from the song at the beginning, which is a drink made from sugar cane. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. Again, don't forget to check out the show notes page at learnspanishconsalsa.com slash 79. That's learnspanishconsalsa.com slash 79, where you actually be able to see episode one of the series Celia, which is on the Telemundo website. And just a little tip before I go about watching the series on Telemundo. So I have a pet peeve, and I don't know about you if you've tried this before, when I try to watch a show that's in Spanish, I don't like to use English subtitles and everyone has their preferences. Some people like to read in English while they are watching a show, but I prefer to watch with the subtitles in Spanish. And what I've noticed is that a lot of times the audio does not match the actual subtitles. And I think the reason for that is because so if you have subtitles in Spanish, for example, or closed captions in Spanish, it's usually for an audience that is deaf, right? That's what the closed captioning is for. It's not really for language learners. So sometimes I've noticed the dialogue that's actually in the script that the actors are saying does not match what's in the closed caption. And if you were to change it to English, for example, well, then it doesn't really matter because you're just reading it for the translation. And I think that the people who make these series don't expect someone who's reading in English to want to know what the Spanish is. They just want to know what's going on in the series. All right. So a lot of times when you turn on the subtitles or the closed captioning for a series that's in Spanish or it's dubbed in Spanish, like an English movie that's dubbed into Spanish with the audio, they often do not sync up. But here is one exception that I actually found. So on Telemundo's website, and this is the link I'm going to include in the show notes, so learnspanishconsalsa.com slash 79, you actually are going to find closed captions that match the text that's in the show, which is kind of amazing. <laughs> what, you know, if you've, if you've seen this before, if you haven't noticed, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but it really is uh, not common to find where the actual audio in Spanish matches the closed caption or subtitles that appear on the screen. But on Telemundo's website, you just have to turn on closed captioning and you will actually see the words if you need, you know, help as you listen. Cause this is again, 
Cuban Spanish, so if you're not familiar with it, and they do speak pretty fast, especially um, her sister's character, Celia Cruz's sister, she talks super duper fast. So you might need to turn those on, but if you go and watch it on Telemundo's website, you'll be able to turn it on and it'll actually match what you're hearing. So that's a, a bonus for watching it on Telemundo. I believe it used to be available on Netflix. I don't know if it is anymore. But Netflix, they definitely did not match. So if you're going to watch it, I would recommend watching it on Telemundo's website. Okay, so that's just a little a little trick, a little hack to make sure you watch it from Telemundo and not on Netflix or another source. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. Next week, I'm going to actually do a listener q and I'm going to be answering a question that came in from one of our listeners. So make sure that you stay tuned for episode 80 next week. And don't forget, if you want to enter our giveaway, make sure you share this episode on Instagram and tag us at Learn Spanish Con Salsa or on Facebook as well, where you can tag the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast page and let someone else know about this episode. If you enjoyed what you heard today and you will be entered in our monthly giveaway for a free private one-on-one Spanish coaching session where you can get help with your language learning strategy or just practice conversation. Okay. So make sure you share this episode and tag us and share it with your friends and let them know what your number one takeaway was and let more people know about the podcast. We really do appreciate when you share the episodes, when you leave us ratings and reviews, because it really helps other Spanish learners just like you find our podcast and be able to learn more Spanish con salsa. Okay. So as always, I hope that something you heard today has helped take you one step closer from Spanish beginner to bilingual. Hasta la próxima. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com. 